It's a Tuesday, and this means it's time for healing conversations. The space where we tap into your mental state to bring you healing and take you on completeness and wholeness. I'm your host, Pastor Ntavise Mwepe. This evening, we are speaking on journaling. And it's something that we often hear about, people encouraging journaling as a form of gratitude. And to take us on this journey and perhaps explain to us as a nation the importance of journaling is my guest. She's the founder of Journaling for the Future. She's the founder of Finding Me, and I love that, Finding Me Book Club. She's also an entrepreneur. I'm joined by Ntabi Singh Chaoke. Welcome, Sissi. Thank you very much. It's such a pleasure to have you on this platform. I saw your initiative and it resonated with my spirit. Mm. Um, I'm someone who struggled with mental health for quite some time. And journaling has been one of the ways, you know, that I've been able to cope, so to speak, and reflect overall over my life. So when I saw your initiative, I thought, now here is someone who can better explain what journaling is and why journaling. But before we get to that, how did you get here? Who is Ntabi Seng Chahuke? How did you get to finding journaling as such a passion? Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. And I already feel at home because you are a fellow journaler, <laughs> if there's a word like that. Um, how it started really for the longest part of my life, uh, if I can remember from teenagehood, I used to write, you know, my thoughts, my emotions. Little did I know that, you know, going forward is going to be an initiative. But how it was really founded, it was during COVID, where everyone had the most time, you know, to sit and to think and to reflect. And from then, I, I watched a Christian movie about a lady called Melissa Kemp. Uh, she died because of cancer, but what she was doing during the process, she was journaling. Mm. There's even a dedicated website with all her journal entries online mm. for people to just go and read what she was going through, you know, the challenges, the pains and the... And I think also for her family to also be able to refer and maybe someone with cancer or who has a person with cancer in their life can also refer to the website and be encouraged. Mm. And then journaling for the future, it was inspired by scripture. Mm. You know, the scripture in Romans 15, uh, I think it's verse 4, uh, it says that these things are written mm. for the future mm -hmm. so that they can help to encourage, they can help, you know, others to continue moving. I mean, things that were written in the Bible were written so that we can be encouraged, Precisely. we can keep going. And we would not find things that are happening strange mm. to us because we know there's nothing new under the sun. It is in the word of God. And also... Another scripture that I would like to quote, it's in the book of Psalms. A person who used to journal, I would say, is David. Mm. Okay, there is Job, there is other people, mm. but David used to journal, if you think about it. I mean, you look at Psalms like Psalm 31, where you find that he's speaking, he says, my soul is grieved. Yeah. I am so tired. I feel like giving up God. And then when he goes down anyway, he turns it around and says that, uh, but I give thanks to you because mm. I know you are going to save me. So it is just sharing your pain, pouring it out, and also at the same time being grateful for the situation that you are in. Mm. And then from there, uh, back to 2020, then I decided, you know, I'm going to use my time to write journals for my children. Mm. Uh, I've got three children. And then I started writing as far as I can remember from their birth, what happened then. Mm. You know, I'm writing for the future and I'm writing. If, 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 if I'm writing to my son, I'm writing, referring to him, like I'm speaking to him. Mm. Hence, journaling for the future. You know, what did I experience during your birth? What did I see in mm. you as a young boy? He's now... Uh, 16, but I try to, you know, trace back as much as possible, hence journaling for the future. So with, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued with your journaling for your children. Yes. You are basically chronicling their journey from the time when they can 
not even phantom themselves. Yes. So they will take the journal mm -hmm. as an adult, perhaps as a teenager, yes. and know, oh, this is how my mother's pregnancy with me was. Yes. This is how my parents experienced my birth. Yes. And in a way, you are taking them on your journey. Yes. And their journey. Yes. At the same time. Yes. Mm. Yes. Out of interest, mm -hmm. and uh, this was not really the focus, okay. but I want to pick on that. All right. Have you shared any experiences that you have written off okay. with your kids? Yes, I have. What uh, is their reaction, in, <laughs> you know, in, in terms of reading mm -hmm. their, their, you mm -hmm. know, their story of their life and getting to this point? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, really <laughs> intrigued by that. You know, it's like they are reading their own storybook. I'll put it like that, mm. you know. And we'll say, oh, mama, yeah, the day I was born, so papa lifted me up and dedicated me to God. Mm. Okay, when I was young, I used to love this, but I don't love this anymore. Yes. Oh, you struggled with this when you were pregnant with me, but you are still here with me. You know, things like that. They were very much, you know, happy to mm. hear the story of their lives. And, well. and and I find it intriguing, particularly because with us and mm. um you know, the, the black community, we don't document a lot. We do not. We, we, we don't um, write so history, mm -hmm. you know, gets lost in, trans, in translation. Yes. And also um, a lot remains unsaid. Mm -hmm. But with journaling, that becomes a platform. Yes, very true, very true. I mean, I always tell people that if the Bible was not intentionally recorded, where were we going to read yeah. it? You know, someone was intentional. Well, God inspired mm. uh, his servants to write down everything. I mean, if you're going through the West, you go to Job's Journal. I'll call it Job's Journal, yes. not chapter, and say, and read Horio. This person even questioned God. There was mm. a point in my life last week when I lost a friend, I questioned God and I said, why did you do this? And I was reminded of Job's Journal when he questioned God and God said to him, did you make the stars? Do you know how I make the stars? Do you mm. know how I create? this in that way he was telling him do not question me I know what is right for you is it sufficient for me to say um, I know my life I know what I'm going through I feel um, down like you gave the example of David yes and you know um, it's enough you know I can keep it within myself mm. is it sufficient for one to say that I do not think so mm. because I would refer back to my teenage years. There were so many things that I went through. You know, you discover things about your family, you discover a lot. And I believe that time, as I was writing down my thoughts, you know, the angry feelings that I had, I was pouring out. And, you know, when they say, I, I was reading a study on Harvard, they were saying that uh, they put people on a group of study to go and journal, you know, people who were specifically uh, grieving at that point. Mm. And what they realized after that certain period of journaling, the people started sleeping better, mm. the people started feeling better. Because, you know, a psychologist is not always on call, you know, to, to answer. Say, but if you're feeling angry at that moment and you're alone, you can write, I do not understand. I'm angry. Why did this happen? So in a way, you offload mm. and feel better mm. after that. What about uh, journaling and your overall mental health? Okay. Um, studies have shown that, like you say, people who journal mm. really um, in, through their grief journey sleep mm. better. Yes. Is it an, um, an important um, aspect of one's mental well-being? You know, I would answer that and say 100% it is. Uh, it, it is my prayer and hope that we reignite the culture of journaling amongst everyone. Mm. You know, there is gratitude journaling. If you try that just for only a week and write what you are grateful for, regardless of what you find yourself in, you will find your spirit more uplifted. Mm. You know, you will have a better perception and say, it is not all bad. Mm. I have this, I have that. And I'm not a psychologist, but I would say also the, the process of just taking your thoughts from the mind, you know, focusing solely on putting them on paper. Mm. There's something that happens there. And obviously it is for your benefit mm. and well-being. And, you know, without us having any studies, but mm. uh, uh, from my personal experience as well, mm. you know, when you go through the, the phase where you start um, documenting from a gratitude point of view, yes. it, it, it um, inevitably has the effect of changing your mindset. Yes. You don't necessarily journal with that in mind, mm -hmm. but that becomes the result, isn't yes. it? Yes, mm. it's an after effect, like it is, it is just there, mm. yes. 
you um, spoke about gratitude journaling. Mm. Can one really um, only journal from a point of gratitude? Are there various other forms of journaling? Okay. Um, gratitude is on top of my list there because you can do it daily. You know, even if you put three entries a day, I'm grateful for my family. I'm mm -hmm. grateful for the job that I have. I'm grateful that I'm still alive, regardless of what I'm going through. But on top of that, uh, I would go into grief journaling, which mm -hmm. is something very fresh that I experienced right now, like a week ago in my life. I lost a friend. Uh, we were very close and she has a young daughter. Mm. You know, when I went to her home, because she's no longer there, we were all grieved and frustrated. And I saw that her daughter is not speaking, you know, she's not her bubbly self. I gave her a journal. I even personalized it for her and I said, letters to mommy. And then I told mm. her, Hora, I know you are feeling angry. You are asking, why did mommy, mommy go? Mm. But you can't voice it out. Write it down on paper. Why did God do this? Write it down on paper. You know, why, what, am I, what is going to happen to my family? Write it down on mm. paper. Mm. And automatically you are pouring out because those things, when they are bottled up inside, that is where we have suicide rates. That is yes. where we have people just running to drugs. You mm. know, if they knew that instead of running to drugs, the first instance is when I experienced these things. Let me just write it down mm. and pour it out. Because remember, it's not easy for even our children sometimes to speak to us and come and pour their yes. hearts out. Yes. Even I sometimes, it's not easy to go to my partner and tell him, you know, this is how I'm feeling. Maybe he's not there. He doesn't have time. Mm. But writing it down, mm. it also helps. How regular do you recommend for someone to journal? Um, for those who are starting out, because mm. it's a very, <laughs> it's a culture, it's like going to the gym, you know, you just have to be consistent and push yourself and then it becomes a habit. Mm. I would say every day, do some gratitude channeling. Mm -hmm. And then as and when events are happening and are coming into your life, add on to that. Mm. Yeah, that's what I can say. You, you come back to gratitude, gratitude, yes. gratitude. And to me, that says that... Um, could that perhaps be the objective in, in journaling for one's mindset to ultimately, instead of dwelling on the doom, yes, to get into a place where it says, you know, yeah, I'm going through a tough time, mm -hmm. but like you say, but God, yes, uh, it was bad today, mm -hmm. but God, yes, mm. yes, no, I can definitely say that top of the list gratitude be grateful each and every day i mean the bible tells us that he renews his mercy each and every morning you mm. know he just pours it out so each and every new day he also pours down some gratitude on us mm. so why not say i am grateful to just wake up today you know it seems like a very uh, small exercise but the effect that is happening inside of us when we do that is more powerful mm. Mm. um I'm going to take you back to the beginning of the conversation when you spoke of David yes. and uh, Psalm 31. Yes. Now, can one really um, talk about journaling outside of spirituality? What are the relationships there? What are the dynamics there? Mm, out of spirituality. Mm. In my opinion, I would give my opinion and based on my experience, it always touches the soul. Mm. It always touches the spirit. And you know, we are spiritual beings, as they say, having a physical experience. Yes. So I think we can never really separate the true, the two. That's my opinion. But yeah, that's my opinion on that. Mm. Mm. When you talk about um, gratitude, you reflect yes. on the goodness of the Lord. Yes. Um, you reflect on how you know, experiences and life has taken you to a certain place. Yes. Yet you found the hand of the Lord sustaining you. Yes. How imperative is it to stay, you know, intentionally positive throughout your journaling? Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. easy. It's easy yeah. to say, mm. um, I'm angry. Mm. So my journal can mainly mm. speak about my anger yeah. without getting to a point of reflecting mm. on the now. Mm. Because if I can give an example, even if I'm angry, um, there should be something positive, right? Yes, in my life. yes, yes, yeah. yes. 
okay um coming to that you know we cannot force to feel positive no, we cannot force it but i believe the psychology of writing it down even mm. when you don't feel like it you know they will say worship god even when you don't feel like doing it and automatically you'll get into the mood but we must be very careful not to divert to pretending that i'm happy chappy i'm always positive yeah. i'm what it's important it's, it's about getting those feelings out without mm. being judged getting those feelings out without feeling that you know i need to look strong to the world you know sometimes because as christians Sometimes we wear this mask, mm -hmm. you know, of a big smile, you know, make up and one, all, yeah. a fake one, yes, to be exact. And we do not deal with what we feel inside. Honestly, if I'm to go back to last week when we had to bury my friend, I was so angry. Mm. Angry at God. Even when, you know, during the services when they worshipped, I felt like, oh, why do I need... Why do God, I need to worship why? you? Why do I need... I was real about yeah. it, yeah. you know, until I had an experience where then after the funeral, just two days after the funeral, he made me to sit because immediately after the funeral, I ignored my feelings. Uh, I was not intentional about writing them down yeah. for those few days because anyway, it was busy. And I went straight to work, you know, up until a day after I was bedridden. I could not move. Then God forced me to be in a secluded place mm. where it's me and him face to face. Where even when I tell him, Hore, why did you do it? He asked me, Hore, look at Job. Did I told him, did he create this dust? Mm. I know what I'm doing. That's when then I started channeling all my emotions about the passing of my friend mm. yeah and from your personal experience did you see a change definitely i can attest to that a hundred percent over and over again immediately you know i remember i said letters to tanti i started writing mm. you know i was feeling angry i did not believe that you would go so soon i recorded every feeling that I felt from the time ahead of her death mm. because initially she lost a baby and I was ready to say, you know, we're going to come for And then she her, yeah. goes there. So I recorded from that stage and say, you know, from the moment you lost the baby, I thought I was going to come to be a pillar for you. I was mm. going to bring you flowers. I saw myself doing that, even yeah. researching on certain things. I recorded that. And then you passed on, my friend. Mm. What happened? You know, and then I started recording all those things. Now I'm speaking about her kids in the church how it makes me feel and I feel a huge load off my shoulder mm. after doing that is journaling for anybody definitely for anybody I mean uh, if you look back the or the journaling how it happened it was uh, people like Leonardo da Vinci, the artist who started to journal. You know, if you go to the internet, you'll find so much information, like there are journal entries. You'll mm. find journal entries of uh, our past president in prison while he was still in Robben Island, you mm. know, those kind of things. So, yeah. Um, Sister Tabi, speaking to the teenagers, one gets a sense that our children are feeling so lost. They report a sense of abandonment. Yes. You know, some, despite having their parents still alive, mm. there seems to be a discommunication somehow between parents and children. Mm. Um, how does journaling help us bridge and mend that relationship? Okay. Uh, I think the key word when you have uh, children or teenagers in your house is safe space and privacy. Mm. That's a tick. Journaling does that. It's a safe space and it's a private place where they can express their emotions. And second to that, remember that when you, they say when you get a teenager, when your child reaches teenage wood, it's like they are floating in a bubble. You can't even access them. You know, mm. you become so much apart that you have to have certain building blocks you know, on how you can get them closer to you. Mm. So I would also suggest that uh, sharing a journal with your children, your teenage children, mm. you know, get them started there because remember they're always on social media, they're always expressing things and uh, their emotions out there, but share a journal with them. Uh, ask them to write down, start with gratitude with them 
and thereafter ask them to write about the experience of their day. You know, mm. just say this, we are writing our family history. That's just a, a, a suggestion. We are writing our family history, so we're going to refer back. You, my son, you'll check 10 years back, what did I experience on mm -hmm. this day? Mm -hmm. In that way, you're still keeping the communication lines open in a wise way, an exciting way, where they feel like they are writing a story of their lives. Mm. So I think with teenagers, it is very important to instill that culture and reignite it continuously with them so that they may be able to pour out their emotions. Remember, inside there's a lot of hormonal changes, mm. mental, you know, commotion and everything. You are at the crossroads of life as a teenager. So I think making sure that they find a space where they can uh, recollect their thoughts, put them down on paper, it also helps them with their internal well-being. Right, you mentioned that sharing a journal. Can you just explain that to us? <laughs> Yeah, it's something that I'm also working on as a family, mm. uh, with my family, because I looked back at my family history. There are a lot of gaps. Mm. You know, I'm still trying to research about my great grandmother, about this. So you may, you put it, take it from a perspective of writing down your family history. Like this is our, this is where we're going to find our family tree. This is where we're going to find the things that are happening. And you tell your teenager that you know what, in the future your son will read this and they will remember mm. that. Oh, my father also went through this. You know, and at the same time, we are journaling for the future because mm. future generations will be able to refer and uh, look at that. Is it literally like sharing, like I jot down mm. and then the next one comes in and jot down in the very same journal? <laughs> or how does it literally, you know, practically, in the practical sense of things work? Mm. I, would, I would suggest, let's say, in one week, you know, uh, you give everyone a chance in that week mm. to recollect what happened the previous week or on the day or whatever experience that comes to mind and say, you know, mama, this one I have to put down. I have to put down. I met a new friend. I did this. I did this or things like that. You will never know that they will ultimately also record things that are bad that happened because remember communication with them is a learning process also for us as parents. Mm. Mm. Let's um, speak to people now. Okay. Um, and this is the objective of the show. Okay. We want to communicate, you know, the choice to live. Yes. We want to communicate that there are adversities in life, mm -hmm. but that um, we, we be intentional in choosing to rise above them. Yes. How does journaling factor into that, taking into account the high suicide rate that we have as a mm -hmm. country? Mm -hmm. Very true. Um, you know, looking at suicide or the process thereof, there, there, were, there was an instance where I also tried to commit suicide. And, mm. you know, with that experience, you know, beforehand, there are a lot of thoughts and communication in your mind. Yeah. They are running around in your mind and there's a lot of commotion and confusion. Now, when you come in with a journal, you are sort of like putting things into perspective or offloading all that, you know, jumbled up things in your mind. And in that way, it helps one to be able to say, you know, it's not so bad. It mm. makes you sober some way, somehow. Yeah. It sobers you up to see that, you know what, look at what you are doing right now. You are putting these thoughts on paper. Read them again. You know, mind you are applying it. Your thoughts, you are applying them. Then you are able to see that, no. Mm. Uh, let me rather, you know, take a different direction. Reflecting as well. Reflecting, Reflecting as yes. well. Because one, when one gets to the point of suicide, mm. it's, it's usually, you know, a commotion of, yes. of traumas. Yes. You yes. know, yes. and one gets to a point where you feel, I just can't take it anymore. Mm. But mm. when you go back... Mm to your journal and let's let's touch a bit on reflecting, reflecting. you know the importance of going back to mm. what you've written years ago yes. what i wrote last week yes. you know in relation to where i am today yes mm. and that's a very good question because sometimes when i do go back to my journals because remember the mind cannot store all this information and this events that happened in your life mm. sometimes i do take time to say oh my god in 2018 Things were this bad and I conquered, you know? Yeah. I reflect and I say, okay, which means that the situation that I'm in now is even better compared to what I went through then. Let me just reflect and take this experience forward and remember that if I could conquer that, then I would also conquer this as well. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do we get hold of your channel? <laughs> um, journaling for the future. 
Okay. Mm. You uh, do customized yes, journals. Yes, yes, I do. Mm. Yes, I do customized uh, in every way that we can speak uh, that speaks to the client and their needs. Mm. Uh, I think catch me on journaling for the future. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook. If you get there, then you you have all my details there. Mm. Yes. Mm. There we have it. I'm convinced after my conversation today with Susan Tabison Chauke that journaling is a way to cap the high suicide rate our country is experiencing. Africa has been reported to have the highest rate of deaths by suicide, according to the World Health Organization. And in journaling, we bring our emotions to the surface. We give ourselves the opportunity to reflect on what is hurting us and what we need help on. And journaling may just be the platform that our country needs. From an early age, let's encourage our children and our families to journal. It's a way to improve dialogue. It's a way to also keep in tune with what's happening in each other's emotions. So I'm hoping that what you're taking away from today's installment is the importance of communicating, even if it is to yourself, your emotions. Let's fight the greatest battle of our lives against our minds and stay healthy and sober towards our wholeness. God bless you. Join us again next week. Goodbye. Get yourself a copy of our latest books, The Mending of a Broken Vessel, and Maintaining Your Joy, a journal for daily positive living. Visit a bookstore near you.